These are the stories. My little girl, she's changing lives just by being herself. Of organizations and people making a difference. When you first tell someone about adaptive wheelchair boxing, it doesn't sound real. And empowering others. It saved my life. It saved my life. Across Canada. I scored my first goal in my first blind hockey game. In our community. You'd be surprised how many people don't know what a tandem is, which is bicycles built for two. Trailblazers is a recreational club with a twist. We provide cycling for those who have limited or no vision with sighted volunteers on our club-owned tandems. I'm Linda Spinney, and I am president of Trailblazers. Trailblazers has been around now for 35 years. They have 38 tandem bikes spread across the city in five different sheds. We advertise for sighted volunteers, cyclists preferred, to ride at the front of the tandem, and members who are blind, vision impaired, or deaf blind pay an annual membership and they ride on the back of the bike behind the captain. My name is Jeremy Burke and I'm the operations manager with the Trailblazers Tandem Cycling Club. I never thought I'd become a trailblazer uh, until uh, I was in the bike show one day. Uh, I've always been an avid cyclist and I came across the Trailblazers booth and met Linda, our president, and uh, she piqued my interest in being a, becoming a captain with the Trailblazers. Once I found out about the club, uh, I thought it was a perfect fit for me. I'm an avid cyclist, and uh, when I joined the Trailblazers, I was just about to retire, so it was, it was good for me. I joined the Trailblazers as a captain, went through my orientation, and immediately felt comfortable riding with people suffering vision loss. So we're going to need a right-hand turn shortly because we're going to turn right. All right. Okay. A Trailblazers bike has two riders, and each has their own role to play. Can, I have a, can you give me a right? Yep. Thank you. Turning right. Every bicycle has to have a team, and the team consists of a captain and a stoker. The person at the front is called the captain, and the person on the back is called a stoker. In our case, the person on the front is a sighted rider, and the person on the back is a visually impaired or a person suffering vision loss. I joined Trailblazers 22 years ago when my son was 10 years old. I've been registered legally blind for some time, but I've always had good high partial vision and I used to always ride a bike everywhere I went. And my son he used to ride with me. We would uh, go on excursions and picnics with our bikes, just him and I. We always rode our bikes everywhere. Back in um, 98, I had a accident, just a small one. I, I rode into the back of a parked car and I wasn't going very fast, but the problem at that time, I was riding uh, through the sun in the shade and it was hard to adjust the vision at that time and I didn't see the car and I ran right into it. It's a good thing I wasn't going very fast. The owner come running out of the house and checked to see if I was okay. Did I get hurt? And am I, you know, are you sure you're okay? And I, I said, yeah, I'm fine, thank you. I said, I just saw a little bit of the pride hurt. From that point on, I started to be a little more careful. And then at work, I had a coworker who said, why don't you join Trailblazers? They explained it was a tandem club for blind, vision impaired adults. And I said, well, can my son Jeffrey come with us on his bike? And they said, yeah. That's the whole idea of, uh, it's a recreational club. You can uh, bring your friends with you even. So at the time, I thought that was fantastic because I was a little skeptical of riding that single bike again. So I gave it up and started riding tandem. I have to make sure the bikes are running and in good working order. Originally, my responsibility was purely just uh, maintenance of bicycles, but over the years, it's grown into much more than that. And although we're just a cycling club, 
It's a pretty big deal to organize a cycling club for the visually impaired. COVID forced the club to cancel their popular group rides, but they've recently been able to start doing them again. Well, our role as captains uh, is first and foremost to provide a safe cycling experience. So uh, we don't race. We get off our bikes and walk over any slippery surfaces. We always ensure safety first. Every bike needs to have uh, tire irons to take a tire off, a spare tube. It basically, it's flat repair stuff. So tire irons, spare tube, pump, uh, and some Allen keys or the appropriate wrenches for the bike. Uh, because uh, if we have a flat tire and we're out by ourselves, then hopefully the captain knows how to change it. And if the captain cannot change the tire, then he might be able to find somebody else on a bicycle that can help him with the tire change. Riders meet at a shed in the city before going out for a group ride. All right, so uh, bikes have been checked. Uh, all the tires are good and make sure we have tools for our bikes. Have you done that, Mike? Everything's done. And uh, everybody have sunscreen on? Yeah? <laughs> Does anybody need sunscreen before we go? Because I've got some in my bag. Let's, let's mount up. My name is Chris Spinney. I'm a secretary with the Trailblazers. So I originally saw an article in the newspaper about the Trailblazers, and so I read it and said, this sounds interesting. I had just finished recovering from a separated shoulder from a rollerblading incident, and thought maybe I'm getting a little old for rollerblading, let's go back to cycling. So I, I saw the article and said, good idea. And I joined in 1999, the summer of 99, when they first started their season. And uh, one of our first events was having a picnic in June and that's where I met Chris. He joined as a captain, so we both joined the same year, 1999. We rode through the summer months, quite a few times we rode. I don't really remember the exact um, first time that we rode together, but I know that uh, you know we, we hit it off. I think there was even some excuses along the way there, something about um, her computer needing uh, some fixing. Uh, I was quite into uh, rebuilding and fixing computers at the time, so I guess the conversation must have come around, come around that at one point. The, the chemistry was there, we got along great. Everybody recognized the chemistry between us before we did. We were the last ones to know. It wasn't too long afterwards that I proposed to Linda and we made arrangements to get married fairly quickly, actually. We were married in August and we got married at um, St. Michael's Cathedral. And we're still happily married. 21 years later, and the rest is history. Bunch of uh, rose bushes there that you'd like. <laughs> uh, keep that point in mind, dear. Yes, dear. <laughs> Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. How's it feeling, Wendy? Feels great. Seat height's good? Yep. Wendy just joined Trailblazers last year, but already, She's learned a lot about riding a tandem bicycle. I was more concerned about the procedures and just how to get around stuff. And once we started to work together, it was actually quite exhilarating. It wasn't as bad as I thought. I was still nervous for most of the part of the ride, but then my captain gave me a lot of tips on how to sort of relax and enjoy the ride a lot more better. And one of my other fears was riding on a road. I never rode on a road before. It's always sort of been on a side street, residential street, or somewhat of a sidewalk. Usually when we get, there's a lot of communication uh, to getting onto the bike. It's basically like how you would communicate if you were to sail a boat. Um, you need one person to be the navigator, the captain, and then the person, the stoker, is the one who is going to be powering, uh, basically be the power to engine of the bike. And through communication, um, we also put a lot of safety precautions into place. Like if we need to make a right turn, 
then I'll do the hang signals. Okay, so if you were to use your right, if you were to use your left hand for all the signals, let's go through it. So left hand signal, ready? You're straight out, yeah. Yep. And a right hand signal is up, yep. correct? And stopping is down. Yep. Those are the three signals. I heard a lot of good things about trailblazers to help uh, people who are blind or vision impaired um, basically gain back independence and enjoy the freedom of riding on a bike again. My name is uh, Sri Kamalan, Padmanathan. You know, biking is my passion uh, since the uh, childhood. And back home, everybody, all the school kids, go by bikes to their schools. I started losing my sight when I was seven, eight years old because of my impairment. I didn't get to enjoy the bike. So when I came to Canada and I was new, no family members, I joined the Trailblazers Club in early 90s. So this was my first thing, recreational thing I joined. So now we're going to go to the bike. Okay. No, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is your seat here. After family and work commitments kept Sri away for a number of years, last year he rejoined Trailblazers. All right. Well, that's good. So I'm going to get on and just stay there. Okay. So now, whenever you're ready, you can get on the bike just to check the seat. All looking good. I will set up the pedal for you. Beautiful. Now there are two cars, so I'm just waiting for the other car, and that's fine. You ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. At the stop sign, we'll be turning right. Going right. And this is going to be a T intersection. Yeah. That's where we turn right. Okay. It is really informative and fun to meet different captains and go with different people. We always have very interesting conversation that is part of the tandem biking. The captains were really passionate cyclists. You know? So every captains I meet, you know, so much uh, history, their background and their passion. So it was really fun to go with different captains. Are you having fun? As long as it's not raining, we're having fun. Did you have your lunch, I hope? I did, I did, thank you. Uh -huh. yeah, there's a car coming our way. Yeah. To be a captain on a tandem means you're sharing that uh, with someone else as well. Someone else who couldn't perhaps normally ride on their own, whether they're completely blind or have partial vision. It's enjoyable overall because you're, you're sharing something, but you're still doing something that you like. It's not, you're not taking someone for a ride, you're going out for a ride together. Currently I am doing like 40k uh, per trip uh, when time permits. I want to uh, go up to at least 50, 55 uh, before the end of the summer. You are balancing and then you pedal and you put energy and then you get to enjoy when you are going downhill or when you are tired then you can relax and you can control the speed and you know you can really go even faster in tra trails or even streets. I also like the breeze and when it is you know, really windy and uh, when we go really fast, we like going in a motorbike and all that. You know? So I get to enjoy those kind of benefits on top of all these good things of not polluting the environment. So I feel really spiritually and mentally also feel good. We act as their eyes, and what we see, we try and relay to the stoker, to the best of our ability. We explain to them what we're hearing, maybe even what kind of bird that is. We talk about the river that we're passing, or the train that's going overhead, and we talk about the busy traffic, all which our stoker can hear but can't see. So it's really important to let the stoker feel what it's like to be a cyclist. So this path that they are directing us towards, we're going back towards the, uh, the stairs now? We, no, we're past the stairs. The stairs oh, are we now went behind underneath us. the yes. bridge. Yeah. 
Oh, I didn't, I never went this way before, so I don't know the scenery here. Right. The first time I went out on tandem with a sighted volunteer was an interesting, fantastic, scary experience. Interesting because I get to look around and see what's passing by or sights, smells and things like that that you don't pay attention to when you're cycling yourself. Exciting because it's nice to feel, I don't know, the wind, the air in your hair and on your face. It's, it's exciting that you can do this still, even though you're vision impaired. For a while, I didn't think I could ever cycle again. Our fleet of bikes, uh, when we're doing our orientation, one thing we always say first is the need for communication between the captain and the stoker. The main reason we say that, of course, is that when one person is paddling, the other person is paddling. There's something called a timing chain uh, that connects the main gears to the front where the captain sits. So when the captain's paddling, the stoker has no choice, they have to be paddling as well. What's the scenery you like along here, Chris? I took, uh, I once did a ham radio course at this uh, senior public school on the right <laughs> years ago. Oh, really? Yeah, people get used to the fact that you have to pedal together fairly quickly. Communication is the key with having to talk about, okay, we're going to shift gears, so the person on the back needs to ease off the pressure of paddling. Um, if you're going uh, up a hill, you need to coordinate and change your gears before you reach the hill, because it's almost impossible to be riding up a hill and change to a lower gear after you get halfway up and say, we didn't quite pick a low enough gear, so now we need to get to a lower gear. You simply can't. You need, to, you need to choose your gear ahead of time. When you pedal a bike, whether you realize it or not, and this is something that as a captain on a single bike, you don't even think about, but when you're pedaling on a bike, you automatically ease off the pressure to allow the chains to move up and down the gears before you then start pushing again once you've changed gears to proceed. And it's just something that's automatic, but becomes very obvious that you need to pay attention to when you've got two people on the bike. Uh, I've made some really great friends being a trailblazer, uh, both sighted and non-sighted people. I'd like to see the club be around for a long, long time. My goal is to just continue and making sure the club is as enjoyable and uh, fun as it is for me, for everybody else. That didn't sound right, but that's what I want. <laughs> Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. Last time I rode a bike before I joined Trailblazers, I was 12 years old. I was born with a really rare uh, eye condition that basically put me, like when I was four years old, I started to become, it's kind of difficult to say because I was borderline blind. I wasn't exactly blind, but then I wasn't exactly sighted. Since I joined Trailblazers, just to gain my freedom and independence again, to riding on a cycling, I thought that wasn't possible before. And I was always curious of, you know, how to navigate around Toronto neighborhoods and enjoy the beautiful scenery, even though I wasn't able to see it too much, but to have the caption describe what is around the surrounding areas and just to feel Kind of like feeling the wind through my hair kind of thing. Okay, you can jump up. I got the bike. I guess when I was younger, being low vision and riding a bike, I had to constantly pay attention to, of course, where I'm going, who's in front of me, and sort of calculate the distance between objects and uh, which curb would I feel more comfortable to go down on instead of a big curve so I can go on a small curb. It's a lot more concentration on my part and since I did the tandem, I don't have to pay attention to a lot of that stuff. I just had to pay attention to my, the captain giving me some of the commands that if we're going to slow down, stop, make a right turn, make a left turn, then I already know how to do those signals. So really, it's just keep on paddling. <laughs> They shouldn't worry about the safety part because club management is so diligent about training and making sure 
everybody's safety is in place. You know, they are really dedicated volunteers and uh, executive members who are really managing the club. It really needs a lot of work, so much cooperation and uh, understanding. And we have some amazing, amazing people you now. I wish more people who are blind or visually impaired should take advantage of it. And even the sighted people. Now my kids are grown up and I hope they will join the club as captains. Offering this kind of freedom to uh, blind people is a real joy. And uh, I'm really proud to be a trailblazer. Riding a bike offers great joy, not only to the captain, but the stoker. I'm really looking forward to the group rides when we're able to have it, once the COVID restriction has been lifted. So I'm really, really looking forward to going down to, let's say, like Narco on the Lake or down to Center Island and do the group rides. Don't be afraid. Just give it a try. You don't know what you have till it's gone. And you don't know what to experience until um, you actually rode on a bike. Just enjoy the ride. Producer director Nick Appleton. Executive producer Tyler Cameron. Story producer Julia Lee. Writer editor Nick Appleton. Camera operators James Featherstone, Mike Regain. Development producer Julia Lee. Location audio Richmond Lee. Sound mix Colin Caddies. Narrator Jim Van Horn. Integrated described video specialist Ron Rickford. Content development specialist Karen McGee. Coordinating producer Jennifer Johnson. Director production Karen I. Director of Programming, Brian Perdue. VP Content Development and Programming, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2021, AMI Accessible Media, Inc.